Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Welcome to Oliver Bible Church Service at Inspiration Center. I especially welcome our online viewers. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I believe you will be blessed in this service. Remember that we'll be expecting to hear from you, so contact us using any of our social media handles, and we will revert to you immediately after the service. Right now, can we stand to take the opening prayers? In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for joy you have placed in our heart. We return the glory to you. Father, we roll over this service into your hand. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in all that we are to do today. Let the name of our Father be glorified continually. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, please let me just, um, there are things that are pressed in my spirit to touch on. Then we, we share in the area we've been talking about. Let me read it from verse 25 to 26. So, so he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him, that's Moses, a tree, when he cast it into the rivers, into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians from the Lord who heals you. So God took it upon himself to be a physician, a, a, a healer, a doctor. Okay? Now, we go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. We read, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. For God was with him. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did for blind Bartimaeus is what he still wants to do for somebody today and what he's doing for somebody today. Jesus still heals. He still saves. He still delivers. He still casts out devils and he has commissioned his church to carry on and he's backing us up all the way. The Holy Spirit has not left the earth. He's in charge of the church, governing and directing the church, empowering the church, the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and then to the utmost parts of the earth. James 5, 14 and 15. Let me read from 13 to 15. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your eternal holy word. Your word is you speaking to us. The entrance of your word gives light and gives understanding to the simple. You send your word and you give healing to your people. Father, thank you for the sent word. Let your word come to us by the power of your Holy Spirit. 
Confirm your word with healings and deliverances. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God did not create Adam sick. That's where we started. So in the beginning, sickness and disease that you see so was not so. Are you hearing me? It's something that happened and which God wants to deal with. And so he is always part of his covenant to heal his people. It was the part, a part, an integral part of the old covenant. The first name he revealed to the nation of Israel as they journeyed from Egypt was, I'm your Jehovah Rapha. The first covenant, the redemptive name he revealed to the children of Israel was, I'm your physician, I will heal you, keep you healthy. And he did. The Bible says there was not one feeble one amongst them. He kept them. All right? So in the New Testament, he sent his son as the living word that brought healing to us. And Jesus paid the ultimate price for our total redemption from everything we earned from the fall of man it, through Adam. Are you here? Are we here? Are you here? Okay. Okay, let's build on. So we've been talking of the healing covenant as it is today. And we began to talk of uh, access to healing. is by grace, through faith. Ephesians 2.8, by grace, just like we get saved, it's the same way we get healed. As a matter of fact, Galatians 2.6 says, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. The same way you received him, so walk in him. You received him by faith, walk in the same way with, you know, with him. So Ephesians 2.8 says, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of your own. Neither the salvation nor the faith was from you. It's a gift from God. It is a gift from God. Amen? So then we began to talk of channels of blessing. Out of nine, uh, we've talked about three, about six now. Let's deal with the, remaining, with the remaining three. And then I make some remarks. Some remarks. This is by far, even when we conclude this teaching, is by far all you need to know about healing. We just looked at a certain aspect of divine healing. But the more light you have in this area, the more you will walk in health, recover ground. If you discover, you recover. Okay? Then uh, we looked at believing the word and acting on it. In other words, appropriating the word. We talk of the channel of the spoken word, like the centurion said, told Jesus, you don't need to come to my house. You don't even need to lay hands on that person, on my servant that is sick. Speak the word. And the word will do it. And Jesus spoke and it was done. Then we talked of last week of laying on of hands. Laying on of hands. You know, God and God commands us. Jesus laid hands on people and God they healed. He, when he was alive and was sending out the disciples. He told them to lay hands on people, anoint them with oil. Are you here? And then you see Peter, John, uh, Paul, all of them laying hands on, on people and getting them healed in the early church. In Mark chapter 16, when Jesus talked of the Great Commission, going to the, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them who believe. Every believer here is supposed, every one of those signs is supposed to be evident in your life as a believer in Christ. Everyone here. He said, in my name they shall cast out devils. Every believer shall cast out devils in the name of Jesus. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall, every believer should have the ability to pray in the prayer language of the Spirit. They shall take up serpents, symbolic of the powers of the devil, charms and all these things. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Every believer. Every believer. So let's begin to do it. Start with yourself. You can lay hands on yourself. I told you of a vet doctor my brother was telling us of in those days, in the 80s, in Port Harcourt. He said that there was an influenza that affected chicken and people's poultry, you know, the chicks, chicken died off like that. This man lost none. 
And then they were asking him, what was the, what was the secret? He said that the Bible said that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That the Bible didn't say sick human beings only. So that he was laying hands on his birds. If God so cares for birds, what more human beings? Do you remember one, when God assigned Jonah to go to Nineveh, to, to that great country? He called it a great nation, to that great city. city. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. To that great city. He talked of the number of people that were there, and much cattle. Much cattle. God even cared for the cattle in Nineveh. The cattle on a thousand hills are hills. God blesses nations with these things. He cared for the human beings. He cared for the cattle. Get the words that will help you. So, lay hands on the sick. He, why did he, let, let me show you something in Habakkuk 3 verse 4. Habakkuk 3 verse 4. Look at this. Okay, go back to verse, go back to verse 1. Go back to verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shigionoth. O Lord, I've heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens. And the earth was full of his praise. Look at verse 1. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. Why God does God use hands? God has so designed the hand that through it he will channel out his power. Just like the spikes of a lightning conductor. Those spikes under the strike of thunder produce positive charges that fill the air around that, and those pull the electrons from the lightning. They suck it in through those spikes, through the copper wire down to the earth, neutralizing it. The earth is a conductor. Are you here? The earth is a conductor. You can lay your hands on the earth and declare, because this earth connects all of us. You can put your feet on the earth or lay your hands on it and decree that anybody attacking from any corner of this earth will see the judgment of God. It will reach them. Wars are powerful in the realm of the spirit. They know no barriers. So this thing running about is because the children of God don't know who they are and the kind of power they carry. God has got it in the New King James. Then in the, we go to verse 3. His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his finger. And there his power was hidden. God's power flashes out of his fingers and is the way he has designed us in his image. So when he anoints you, one of the channels through which you can release those rays of power is through your hands. Are you here? Catch this. Get it in the Amplified. That's why he said lay hands. Because he will channel this thing through your hands. He designed it to be that way. Don't ask me why. He didn't say lay your legs. People are laying legs on people now. Laying all kinds of things. And it's no joke. Don't you see it? March on them. I thought it's Satan we were marching. Uh, 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 march and march and Satan don't fall for God. Oh, march and march. I don't know quick God that you saw Satan in. Now it's human beings. People in church that are marching. Lay your hands on the sick, not your legs. Are you here? His brightness is like the sunlight. He has bright rays flashing from his hand. And there in the sunlight splendor is the hiding place of his power. And it's the same way God wants us to pray to there is power. Look at your hands and say, there is power in my hands. It actually comes from your spirit. Where the Holy Spirit comes. But he wants to go through a, 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 a human vessel, a, a vessel, a vessel, a, a natural vessel that can make contact with natural things on earth. So it comes from your spirit and he channels it through your hands. There's actual power. When that woman told Jesus, you said that virtue has left me. Said somebody told me, I felt virtue leave me. He felt power leave him. So God designed, look at your hands and say, God gave me these hands to lay on the sick and they shall recover. 
It's not for slapping people. Sometimes we abuse even the hands. So we talked about last week, we talked of the prayer of faith. The next thing, you can be healed just by forgiving somebody through forgiveness. Each time Jesus taught about prayers, like in Matthew 6, Mark 11, from verse 22 to 20, he talked about faith and prayer and all those things. Faith. That's a major chapter on faith. By the time you go to verse 25, for instance, get to verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. It's not just saying, I have forgiven. I forgive him. Meanwhile, you have done all you want to do. Then you, you, have, you feel some relief now. You say you're forgiven. That's the spirit of vengeance. How many of you know that there is a kind of relief that comes with vengeance? There is a kind of joy that goes with vengeance. <laughs> I've revenged. Is it not you looking at me? Is it not true? But that fleshly vengeance, fleshly joy, it's not the joy of the Holy Spirit of revenge, and then you feel relieved. We can now continue. That's not forgiveness. Being spiteful is not forgiveness. We are talking of, okay, this person has a lot, but I will go say that you are, you write it off, move on. Move on. Count it as nothing. Move on. Are you hearing me? It may not be as sincere as saying it now, but you move on. You don't know the one the person will do the next day. And so you, the person can keep you in the, on the spot. P4. Give you a P4 for life. Keeping you struggling with forgiving. Forgiving even the next one he will do or she will do. It's not, that doesn't mean that you won't talk about it or tell the person you're offending me. You can't move far when you're in unforgiveness. You can't move far. Every time Jesus talked about prayer, he talked about forgiveness. And you take Matthew 6 and all those places. He talked about forgiveness because that's one pitfall in that area of getting results from God. People get held down. Okay. By the... the Pahegi was ministering somewhere. And there was this... Uh, this uh, a woman that came there. She had medical issues on her body. And she lodged in a hotel now, but she was attending there. And then, um, um, I think the message was coming about forgiveness. She, the prayer line, she had gone through the prayer line a couple of times. And then, then she went back to her hotel. The other, she has a brother, her only brother, the only sibling that was living in the U.S. to another city in the U.S. For 22 years, they've not touched to each other. When she had that show, she went to the hotel room and went back there and called him. The man was surprised and was glad that she called. He said, this thing that happened, that thing we did, he said, it was my fault. Forgive me. No, the man said, no, it was my fault. She said, no, it was my fault. They were now, it was my, he said, okay, let's share it 50-50. It was her fault. And she got relieved. She came back there. Before anybody could pray for her, she got healed. The woman man said, the person, where hold person for ground, hold himself. And the problem is that you don't know where that thing will end. You, the people have died in the process. People have died in unforgiveness because of unforgiveness. You have to choose to make progress in spite of some people, not because of them. And the way is forgiveness. You have to choose. It's a choice to make progress in spite of some people, not because of them. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not answer me. I should be able to stand here and minister to anybody. Anybody freely with a free heart. No matter what the person has done or has not done. I should be able to minister to everybody. Trusting God to help that person. Pray for the person from a sincere heart. If you begin to partition people as to those that are in your Google, that those that are in your bad book, you will do that all your life because people change. 
People keep changing. Forgiveness. First, receiving forgiveness will bring you healing. Jesus in Mark 2, Jesus said to that paralyzed man that they brought to him for healing. He said, your sins are forgiven. Then they took this in. Who is this that forgives sins? This blasphemy. He said, which one is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise up, take up your bed, and go home? But that you may know that the Son of Man also has power to forgive sins. I have that authority, Jesus said. Then he said to the man that was paralyzed, he said, take up your bed and walk. Your sins be forgiven. The David talks of the blessedness of the man whose sins are forgiven, unto whom God will not impute iniquity. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. So it's a wonderful thing to know I'm forgiven and to walk in the light of it. It helps your faith because it, re it removes the guilt and knocks out the accusations of the devil that produces that guilt. Eh? See, the devil will always accuse. The Bible says day and night, that's a full-time job. The other ones, he does part-time. Day and night, he said, the accuser of the brethren, who accuses them before God, day and night, full time. And how does that, he, he think he's, uh, and he's, when he begins to accuse you, you begin to feel guilty, you can't operate in faith, you, your faith gets paralyzed. As long as Satan holds you in accusation, your faith is paralyzed. Once you're feeling guilty, you, don't, you lose confidence. So it's good to know you're forgiven, your faith comes alive. It's good to receive forgiveness. And then it's also unnecessary to forgive others. So in both ways, you need forgiveness for healing. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives? First, he forgives. Who forgives all your iniquities? I'm talking of Psalm 103 from verse 1. Who forgives all your iniquities? The next thing, who heals all your diseases? It's a package. Who redeems your life from destruction, from terminal conditions? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? <laughs> One of us said he has repented. On Wednesday, he was telling us he has repented. He, that he used to call himself an old man. You know, when I was addressing this old man, you, 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 he said, I said, where the brain works? The, it's the brain that controls the nervous system. How many of us know? And it controls it by sending signal. It, it, once it has control of the nervous system, it has control of the body. And it does it by sending signals. When you say something, the brain interprets it the way you said it and takes it, sends a signal. Once you begin to say, I'm tired, the brain sends the signal, he's tired. It affects your whole body. You begin to get tired. I'm telling you. You know, there are some doctors in South Korea. Now, I had McCankins uh, talk about this. Uh, he was quoting Young Kicho about it. What Young so they, they said that these doctors, neurosurgeons, they said they have explored every part of the brain. You know, certain parts of the brain control different th uh, things about your being and your operations and your activities and your bodies. He said, but there is one place, they said, each time they touch the speech center, speech center of the brain, that it affects every part of the body, every part of the body reacts. The Bible, though, so, uh, Dr. Cho was saying, he said, when they told Dr. Cho about it, he said, he said, I already knew that. He, he said, who told you about that? Because it was like a new discovery. He said, who told you about that? He said, uh, uh, how did he say it? Um, um, uh, he said, uh, 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 Apostle James of the New Testament, New Testament, he told us. In James chapter 3, where he was talking of the power of the tongue that can set in in motion, the cycles of life affect every cycle in life. The power of speech. 
Who renews our youth like the eagles? That's a promise there. What are you doing with it? James chapter 3, is this verse 4? Check it out. One of the reasons we don't receive is because it's when we don't ask. So, one of the ways to actualize the promises of God or what God has already done in the area of healing, a healing is a done deal with Jesus Christ already through his sacrifice. Is that what? That's James, right? Oh, that's it. It's, I'm talking of where the Bible says you ask not. Okay, it's four. Check chapter four, verse three. Let me see. Check chapter four, verse three. Just move chapter four, verse three. You ask and receive not because you ask, go to verse two. Go to verse two. You lost and have not. You kill. You struggle. People do all kinds of things to have things. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not. Because, number one reason, you ask not. When you saw in the Bible that God renews our youth, what did you do with it? The Bible, talking about David, said, the, talk, David was talking in the Psalms. He said, talking about the king, that's himself. He said, you, he asked life of you and you gave it to him. He gave it to him in abundance, even everlasting life. But David asked, are you hearing me? Have you asked for healing, believing? Have you asked for renewal of your youth? Have you asked, is there? My youth shall he renew like the eagles. Reset it based on the scriptures. God honors his word. He's committed to his word. That's why we say he's faithful. He's committed. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but none of my words shall go unfulfilled. It must find a landing point. You ask not, you receive not, because you ask not. I don't know how else he could have put it. People go through all kinds of challenges, but they never ask for solution from God, God's solution in it. They complain and fight. Husband and wife will be tearing themselves apart. But that thing you're concerned about, when last or when did you ever pray about it? You receive not because you ask not. You know, we find it easier to fight somebody we are seeing. Like Rachel was fighting Jacob. Give me a child or like Put her, hand, her, her, her hands, held him by the belt. Say, give me a child or, or I die. It's not a young husband though. Give me a child. That person that held the husband say, you give me a child or I die. You must kill me today. You must kill me today. If a, a rat passes there, she will jump for her life. Why don't you cry unto God? The children of Israel were complaining against Moses. But that water they needed, they never talked to God about it. Moses was the one that cried unto God. We rather complain and do all kinds of acrobatics and fight and do all these things. But ask him, we don't. Ask and you shall receive. Ask for healing. Lay your hands on that waist and say, God, heal me. Reverse this order. Lay your hands on your eyes. Keep laying it and declaring until it gets better. You can see physically that you're... There was one day here in an evening service, Wednesday service. I put a bowl of oil. I said, I'm not going to anoint everyone. You anoint yourself. Anoint your eyes. How many of us are in that service? Okay. Anoint your eyes. The Bible says, anoint, uh, 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 Jesus said you should ask for, uh, uh, to have your eyes anointed, the eyes out that you may see. I said, anointed for spiritual and physical sin, sin, that your eyes. So one sister that had issues with her sight, he said even with her glasses, she couldn't read this thing on the screen of television, of her computer. So she anointed, that thing cleared. 
She can read all those things without glasses. Now, Jesus still heals. I didn't touch her. She anointed herself. Is that same oil? So it's the power of the Holy Spirit that saves. Sometimes you need to share this in the church so that people know what God is doing. Are you here? It was something like a situation that gave us challenges. The just shall live by faith. Try it. Okay. That's forgiveness there. Yeah. Then sometimes you can use prayer cloth. Prayer cloth. Look at Matthew chapter 9. That's like the principle on which that one is based. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20, 20 to 22. And Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Okay, verse 20. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. It's like the fringes. She just touched this. Look at She just touched this. The fringes, you know, they all used to flow down. She managed to go there and touch it. She didn't touch the flesh of Jesus. She didn't make contact with Jesus' flesh, but his dress. And behold, a woman which, had, which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garments. For she said within herself, if I may touch but his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour by touching the... There are materials that conduct electricity in the natural. I, I thought the best conductor is silver. There is copper because it's more available and less precious. It's used commonly. And there, there are things, all these items, I think they use some kind of aluminum or whatever they come up with. But they conduct electricity. Iron conducts electricity. The earth conducts electricity. Well, well that's why lightning is... The safest place to be when there is lightning strike is in a car with the windows shut. It can't get you. You know? The... There are things that conduct, in the same way, there are materials. I've, we've talked of the flow through our body, human body conducts. You see the woman that touched, people touch Jesus in any part of him. When you lay hands on the, conduct, the human body, God designed us to conduct his power. It's the same way that power oozes out of his hands and so on. Are you here? Now, but there are materials that conduct spiritual electricity to the anointing. Cloth is one of them. You say, why? I don't know. God made it so. So you can take a piece of cloth and anoint it, provide it, anoint it, and send it to somebody that is in the U.S. And that person, it will be laid, hand, laid on that person, and that person can receive healing. I've done it a couple of times. I've even done it for you, an old, very old woman that was blind in the east. Of course, I couldn't go. I, I, the son was in Lagos. I, I told him to get a handkerchief. I blessed it. And what they sent, gave it to him. When he, when, then later, when I called him, he said that when he laid it on her, that she started seeing light. That she, she, she wasn't seeing any light. She started seeing light. That means there was something she received. But I was a new Christian then. I, and I wasn't there. there were, I didn't know how to follow up. I, there was no way to follow up on this thing. Because there was a man that Jesus laid hands on who was blind. And say, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. That's a very dangerous state to be in. If you see men like trees, you treat them like trees. Jesus said, I can't leave you to go this way. You're a dangerous man. <laughs> he said, come. And Jesus laid hands on him again. I said, what do you see? He said, I see everybody clearly. Now he said, you, know, you can go. So there, maybe there would have been a follow-up on that because she actually received something. But prayer, the prayer cloth is just it. Look at Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Verse 11 and verse 12. 
Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. I don't know if it's here or in the... Okay, it's when I was with the ministers. I think it was when we were talking with the ministers recently. We talked about the laying on of hands in our meeting. You know, Smith Wigglesworth had a woman that came. The husband was a drunkard. The man was a soaker. So and it, it can be very frustrating for a wife when they, or even a husband, the way, even if it's the other way, in some cases it's the other way, can be very frustrating. Nothing works well when, there is, when one is addicted to alcohol or any substance. Nothing really works well. You're dealing with two personalities. When they're under the flesh of the substance, it's another personality. When it's the influence leaves them, it's a different personality. So you're dealing with two people. So this woman met the Smith Wigglesworth and told her about the husband and the frustration she was going to. Told her to get a handkerchief. She prayed over that handkerchief. She said, go and lay it on the pillow that he lies on. She went on that day, laid it on the pillow, and he, he lay on it. Then the next morning, he was going to walk. Before he goes to walk, he will branch in one or two pubs and drink before going to walk. Morning safari, you know. <laughs> so, so he rose up the next morning and prepared to go to work. And brought in the first pub. They brought the alcohol. When he tested it, he said, you people, so you people want to poison me. You people want to poison me. He said, you put poison in the drink. And you want to poison me. And he walked out of the place. So he went to another place because he must drink. And we went, we went to another place. They served in the adult for his drink. They served. He said, so all of you have conspired to poison me. All of you are working together. He went to the third place, the same thing. So he went to work. When he came back, he told the wife, he said, can you imagine? He said, all those places I drink, they have conspired. They want to poison me. The, the wife told him, he said, don't you see the hand of God in the whole thing? Don't you see that God wants you to stop this thing? That's how that man stopped drinking. Are you here? Are you here? Pahagin started drinking coffee at the age of four. It's recently I found out that. By the time he was 16, he said he could drink the type his grandpa, who mentored him, <laughs> black steaming coffee. By the age of 16, he could drink it. You know, but I knew pretty well when the wife, when he married, by the time he married, he was no more drinking all those things. He has, when he got saved, he did away with all those things. I don't know why some people allow some things to continue following them, even when you are saved. Why must something destroy you when the Savior is inside? Why must he allow it? So, but the wife was drinking coffee. So one day he prayed and said, God, the next time she takes coffee, this coffee, let it upset her tummy. And it happened. It upset her so much that she stopped drinking coffee. I don't like coffee. The last time I took coffee was 1992. We had a, we had a, a building team meeting and the venue was the office of the engineer, who was a woman, a woman engineer. She was the chairperson of the Society of Engineers that time. So we had that meeting there concerning a building project. And they served coffee. They served us coffee. When, I, when they served that coffee, they served it themselves. And I said this much. So I poured a lot of milk into it. I drank it for three days. I wasn't myself. In the midst of those three days, God told me that thing is strong drink. You know, the Bible talks of strong drink. It's not just alcohol alone. He told, God spoke to me, that thing is strong drink. And I stopped drinking coffee. That's how I stopped drinking coffee. Now, for me, coffee is strong drink. God may not tell you the same thing. But it's not like alcohol. God is very clear on alcohol. Very, very clear on it. You know, the... Some Americans went to Germany and 
they, some American Christians, they were having a meeting with some German Christians. And then the German Christians will take a little alcohol. I don't know if they have stomach ailment. And the Americans will look at them and say, yeah, these people are taking alcohol. And then one of the Germans that was taking that little sip of alcohol said, ah, we heard that in America you people drink coffee. To them, the coffee is wrong. That, so uh, that was Metwigel's worth. So that made us talk about these substances. So that's how that man stopped drinking and later became an evangelist. It was a prayer cloth. They are natural conductors conducting natural electricity or power. And there are also materials that conduct spiritual power. Cloth is one of them. Don't ask me how. I don't know. Just like I don't know why copper is a good conductor of electricity, natural. God made it so. Okay? Um, we talked of call upon the name of the Lord. And then we talk of manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you receive healing through the manifestations of the Spirit. Somebody is preaching and then in the course of the preaching, a case is called out. A case is called out and you can get your healing, a word of knowledge, or through the gift of, uh, gifts of healings. What happens in the case of gifts of healings? People are gifted different ways. It's, that thing is, is plural, gifts of healings. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 about them, it's gifts of healings. You notice that people are gifted in different ways. Uh, there is nobody that, can, that heals all around diseases perfectly like Jesus would do. But you, what you notice in some ministries, some people, when they pray for the deaf, virtually every deaf person they pray for begins to hear. Some others, every tumor they pray about, you know, clear. It doesn't mean that when we encounter these things, we shouldn't pray, but there are people God uses special in those areas uh, through the gifts of healings. So now, but you see, let me tell us, we are in the New Testament and not in the Old Testament. The just shall live by faith. Never you build your life or your Christian faith on prophecy. You will not go far. Never you build your Christian faith on prophecy. Anything that happens, you want somebody to speak to you. God wants to lead all his children by his spirit. So, when nobody has spoken, when, assuming no word of knowledge comes here, no special ministration comes here, anybody can receive healing by acting on the word of God, believing it and appropriating it. You can go forward and say, lay hands on me, and you're still acting on the word you had. Are you saying, are you hearing me? Never you build your life on what people are prophesying to you. You're a New Testament believer. That's not the order of the New Testament. You will be led astray. They will confuse your faith. One of the reasons people don't receive lasting things is because they hear from too many prophets. As your pastor is talking to you, another one talks to you, and you believe it, and he cancels everything you've had for 10 years. So they keep you running around a circle, running around a circle. Moreover, whenever prophecy is always breeding fear and doubt and sapping you of confidence, run for your life. Run for your life. As many as are led by the Spirit of God that are the sons of God. We are not in the Old Testament. Only the prophet, priest, and king had the Holy Spirit. Now God has given all his children the Holy Spirit. You can hear from God. Hear from God yourself. Go into the Bible. Moreover, the word of God that is coming to you, the Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. You can't have a surer prophecy than this word. I can build anything on the prophecy of this word. Anything. Family, health, anything. When a word comes in a special way, fine. When it doesn't come, I go by the more sure word of prophecy. And Isaiah laments, who is blind but my servant? God is lamenting to Isaiah, who is blind but my servant? Who is blind as my servant whom I have chosen? The people of God can be blind. Look at us. The church helped to railroad this man into power. Look at the country. Who is happy now? Neither the people you voted in, their, their happiness is because of what they have loaded. There's no joy. 
There's no joy. There's no joy. May God give us the gift of seeing and knowing. In Jesus' name. Or manifestations of the Spirit. Don't depend on them. When they come, fine. You, it's as the Spirit wills. You can't work it out like they, they tell you that they have it in their power. It's when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can decide in the next one year, you've prophesied today, in the next two years, you will not prophesy. You can work it up and give false prophecy when the Spirit has not spoken, but I'm talking of prophecy by the Holy Spirit. But you have this more sure word of prophecy with you always. Are you here? Well, there was one woman, very, I won't call the name, it's a family everybody knows in this country. We got acquainted with her. One day we were in the bus. I said, I told her we were passing through a certain compound. We were in her bus. In 1992, 93. We were passing through a, a, a certain road. I told her, you see this, you see this road down there. You see this road down there. I said, if you go there, there are more than 12 white garment churches, like courts there. She laughed. <laughs> he said, Brother Owen, hey. He said, do you think you believe I see? He said, do you know, they bathed me there in those days. Say they, they went there. They, 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 if you see the place, it's like this one's here. And then you have these bachelors where they're bathing people and making money. In the name of being prophets that bring deliverance, people lose their self-honor, lose self-esteem. The Lord is good. And finally, worship. Entering his presence and just losing. The, in worship, that problem, you dwarf it before the mighty and majestic God. Before the awesome God. When you begin to worship God and magnify him and lose sight of that problem, you're dwarfing that problem. It becomes smaller and smaller. In the eyes of your faith, that problem becomes smaller and smaller before God. There is balm in Gilead. There is balm in Gilead. There is healing in worship the same way. Be still, you know, that sign, that, that place of letting go and letting God. Letting go and letting God. Letting go and letting God. In worship, this problem counts for nothing. You're the doctor of doctors. You're the provider in difficult situations. You're the God that brought Israel out of Egypt by your strong hand. You change not. You have not changed. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord God Almighty, these things are nothing before you. You are bigger than all my challenges, all my problems. I worship you, my creator, my maker, my redeemer, my healer, my deliverer. You magnify God in the cause of magnify God in that holy presence demons flee sicknesses get away are you hearing me your faith magnifies God above that ch that challenge becomes smaller but when you focus on that problem one way to take your eyes off the problem is to worship God when you take your eyes off the problem it becomes smaller and you're magnifying God it becomes smaller and smaller but when you focus on the problem you will have the problem of those 10 spies out of 12. The walls will look higher. The giants will look taller. Everything begins to amplify until, oh, you feel overwhelmed. Worship reverses all that. I've given you those nine things. Is it not? Is it not? Okay, without, that stillness. That's still, be still and know. It doesn't mean silence in terms of not speaking. But it means that resignation, you know, that, that uh, 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 just letting go, to slacken, that's what it means. It's a Hebrew word that means, it's actually the same word, almost the same word, the root, that is, that word, be, be still and know that I'm God. Um, in, in Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know. That word still is the word rougher, the same word from the same root of healing. Be still. It means to slacken. You're so tensed up. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Slack, slack. Relax. Relax. But now the relaxing is, I'm relaxing about these challenges, these things that are bombarding my mind, these pressures I feel. No, they are nothing. And I'm focusing on God. 
I'm focusing on God. I'm looking away from them, counting them, loosening myself from them, and I'm focusing on God. Be still and know that I am God. Slacken, abate, cease. Let alone, let go. Be still and know that I am God. Rafa. Rafa. All right. And done with that. And done with that. That's the intense of uh, the series, the new uh, the covenant of healing today as it is today. Are you hearing me? Anyone here has a right to be healed. That, that very, we will still talk of some other things, you know, but not the, I'm bringing an end to this, but I want to say something. I want to tell us something. Uh, I'm done with the preaching, but I, I just want to add this like the first thing I said before I, preach, I started preaching. New thoughts, new thoughts take long to register. Because all your life you've been programmed some way. Are you hearing me? You've, prog you, you've been programmed to, to experience things and see things some, some, some way. So new thoughts take time to register. In Romans 12 verse 2, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. And I'm, I'm, why I'm saying this now, in this area of healing, you must continually yield your, each time we are talking about healing, when you go home, look at these things. The more you renew your mind, the better. Our health is very important, especially in a system where the health system does not work. We need God. So Romans 12 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. One of the areas we must renew our mind is concerning our health. What does God say? That's what we are doing. It will take time. New thoughts take time to register. But when you catch the revelation, the devil has lost it eternally. Are you here? Ponder over this. Go through your notes as you go home. You, 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 you have to decide to encode these new thoughts. But that will mean that you're going to, is it on code now? What is already there? As you see new light, allow the new light to displace your old knowledge in this area. Are you hearing me? The devil will resist it through imaginations. Cast down those imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought within you to the obedience of Christ. Begin to line your thoughts in the area of healing with the word of God that is coming. The devil will argue the truth that is passing to you. What you know already will stand against it. Every knowledge, every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. Old thoughts run through with ease. Somehow they have become part of you. You have to ponder the new thoughts. Ponder them, dwell on them. Look at what God is saying in this area. Can I, Holy Spirit, can you let me understand this? Jesus had issues with the disciples on this, understand, because he was always coming, he was, he came to displace the established system that was con contradicting the word of God. You've heard it is, it is said of old, but I say, you've heard that they said, but I say, you've heard that it, it said, but I say. And a lot of times the disciples wouldn't understand that. Check out the number of times Jesus rebuked his disciples. It's because of their slowness or lack of understanding on the things he has been trying to teach them, the new way of looking at things in life. Are you, are you also, even you, are you also without understanding? Are you still without understanding? If you don't understand this one, how will you understand all things? Did you, did you remember Jesus saying these things? He said, if I have told you natural things and you don't understand it, how will you understand spiritual? So he was using natural things to illustrate spiritual. He will cry out in places like Matthew 15, 16, and 17. Matthew 16, 11, you see the same thing. Mark 8, 
17 and 21. One way the things, old thoughts run through with ease. You, you don't struggle with them. Even though they are not helpful a lot of times. God wants us our minds renewed. But they are there. And one way they affect us is in the area of our health. And so you read in a place like Hosea 11 verse 3. I thought Ephraim, that's Israel, talking of Israel. I thought Ephraim also to walk. God is saying, I thought Ephraim also to walk. Taking them by their arms. But they knew not that I healed them. They didn't understand. And God wants us to understand. God wants us to know. Are you here? He wants us to know. When you receive light in an area, darkness flees in that area. Automatically. Once light comes, darkness has to be away. It's just the way it is. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. Allow the old thoughts, allow the new things God is telling you in the area of health to confront and displace the old thoughts, the excuses, the reasonings, the imaginations, and you're on your way to getting better. God bless you. It's time for offering. Okay, remember to pay your tithes. We also encourage us to use the electronic channels to pay our, our, our tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. Okay, if you have put together your offering, please stand as we present our offerings. Father, we thank you this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the privilege of being in your presence today. Thank you for the blessing, O oh God, that have come with this time we have shared with you. With our offerings today, we worship you. We give you glory. We thank you for great things you have done for us. We thank you for greater things you will do. Have your way in our finances. Have your way in our families. Have your way in the works of our hands. In all that pertains us, O oh God, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.